In this video, I'm going to show you the best zone defense in Madden 21. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Now, I'm also going to take you inside my head, kind of break down what I'm seeing, what I'm thinking, and what I'm doing in a live online match of Madden 21. Now, if you're new to the channel and you don't know what my videos are about, uh, my channel is all about how to become a better Madden player. So if you haven't subscribed yet, it's completely free to subscribe. Uh, it just takes a second. Go down and click the subscribe button at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. One other thing I want to make you aware of before we dive too far into the gameplay is my text message membership, which is basically a really, really easy way that you can really get better at this game. Um, essentially what it is is every single week I send out a text message um, from my personal cell phone to your phone uh, with a new offense or defensive scheme breakdown. These are hour-long schemes. Um, we've covered Big Nickel over G, Gun Bunch, Trips Tied In, U-Trips, all of that stuff. Um, and it's completely free to you. All you have to do to sign up for it is just text me. So you can just pull out your phone um, and, and send me a text, and that's it. That's all you got to do. So it's completely free. But anyways, all that to say, uh, I'm running the Bunch Tied In offense that I just released. That link is in the description. Uh, and I just think this is the best offense right now in the community. And the reason why it's so powerful um, is primarily because it is so simple, right? There's beauty in simplicity. And you will see how simple this scheme is, what this forces from uh, your opponent. It, it really does force them to have to adjust. And as you can see right here, um, I have the playmaker ability on Terry McLaurin. I'm running a 25 uh, Washington and 25 uh, Raider theme team right now. It's been working really, really well. Um, I absolutely love this playmaker drag. I think this playmaker drag really does help a lot. You're going to see, I'm going to go to it a lot. Um, and what this playmaker drag can do uh, f from a gun bunch tight end perspective is it really, really does uh, help a ton. Now here we're going to get out of the pocket, hit our tight end, coming back across. I'm actually running Vernon Davis. A lot of people were running with Darren Waller, but Vernon Davis is one speed faster than that Darren Waller, uh, unless you're running a 50 out of 50 Raiders theme team. And so I'm testing him out too as well. The other thing I've got is I've got a couple of deep out elites um, on my guys here. Uh, I got Randall Cunningham. What I like about Randall Cunningham, two things. Number one, his release is significantly better than Rich Gannon. And number two, his uh, speed. I think he has like 96 speed. But I'm actually thinking of switching back um, or switching to... Um, who was his name, or uh, Aaron Rodgers, uh, because he does get the improviser uh, archetype. So, anyways, all that to say, this right here is one of my favorite routes in the game. It's the mesh concept. Um, obviously, if you guys uh, have seen, been watching me for a while, know that I used to run essentially mesh post almost every single play out of the... Um, out of the Arizona Cardinals spread um, with, with their with their curl wheel play there. And so mesh is very, you know, near and dear to my heart. But these corner routes now, they work so, so well because of the latest patch. The corner routes are really, in my opinion, the best route in the game. And the more that you can learn how to understand and throw corner routes, the better your offense is really going to be. So like right here, um, what you're going to see is I'm going to have two curl concepts, and then I'm going to basically have a nice little corner flat concept over here on this left side and he ends up taking care of business there he does a good job with his zones and he's able to get a defensive stop now i'm going to go to one of my favorite 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 uh red zone setups right here uh this is i mean this is just a, a money money setup in the red zone for me um and it's basically essentially what x spot is from trips tied in it's very similar to that concept um, what you're going to see here is Vernon Davis is going to get wide open in the back of the end zone almost every time. And I need to run that setup more. That setup is one of the best setups that I have uh, in this offense, but I probably run it very, very little. Um, and it's one of those things that I would say is a constraint theory play, right? It's something that the defense, um, if they start over-pursuing to the right side flood that we run from PA boot over all the time, we can go to something like that and really have a good opportunity to be able to make something happen. So... Now we're going to shift to defense, and I'm doing something a little bit unique on defense. I haven't seen a lot of people doing this. I'm testing this out a little bit. Um, I had this theory earlier on in the year, and honestly, I, I, I should have done more research on it than I did um, and should have done more lab work on it than I did. But basically what my theory is 
is that you can really get a lot accomplished um, by putting zone coverage abilities on your players. So what that practically looks like is I'm going to have um, out of all my players, and here's a little quick tip, always pause the game during that first defensive drive here. You're going to do two things. Number one, you're going to look at their you're going to take a quick peek at their abilities. So here I'm just kind of seeing what he's got. He's got Playmaker. He's got the Dak Prescott card. Or I'm sorry, no, this is, that was me. This is his team. Um, he has, it looks like he's running a Dallas Cowboys theme team. He doesn't have Gunslinger or Hot Route Master, which is really interesting to me. Um, but he is running with Route Tech on Gallup. Um, he's got some other abilities here as well. But overall, that's, one reason to do that. The second reason why uh, I like to do that is because it gives me another 15 seconds uh, to be able to get my stuff set up. So that's another one of the big reasons um, as to why I do this, you know, pretty much every game. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is take a timeout here because I just want to make sure that everybody is in the right position. So I need to get um, Brian Dawkins down here. So I've got Brian Dawkins down here, and then I'm going to have Sean Taylor. And you see, and then we're going to get Justin Reed in the back end of the defense. Got Troy Vincent. And now my defense is pretty much set up to go. So now I can set my audibles up and have plenty of time to be able to get, you know, everything uh, everything accomplished uh, pre-snap before our first possession. Now, looks like he's going to come out and um, run the ball, um, which if he's running the Dallas theme teams, it makes a lot of sense here. I've got the new Derwin James. I'm kind of testing him out. I'm still unsure on him. Uh, a lot of people really like him, but I personally, I'm not. I'm kind of undecided right now uh, as far as if I'll be using him long term or not. But the 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 abilities that we're using on on defense is we have um, several corners or se our safeties. Pretty much all of them have uh, mid-zone KO. So all of our linebackers have the mid-zone KO ability, except for, uh, obviously, Derwin James, because I'm going to be um, using him as well. So uh, I'm not going to put mid-zone KO on him, but I'm going to put it on everybody else. So they both have mid-zone KO. Uh, my slot cornerback, Richard Sherman, also has mid-zone KO. And then I think, if I remember correctly, I actually went ahead... Uh, and put mid zone KO onto um, onto onto one of my corners, and so my theory is what I could do is essentially I can always move him around. So like Troy Vincent, I essentially always want Troy Vincent to be on the wide, um, or on, not on the wide side of the field, but on the uh, flat zone side of the field. So whichever side that I want to, if I want to run a flat zone to it, uh, I'm going to put him on that. Uh, on that trajectory there so that's a little you know just trying that out a little bit just seeing how it works I, I i personally prefer playing zone coverage to man coverage all day long um just because you can play a little bit more chess with zone coverage um you can just you know you can just kind of really uh i think it's a little safer personally um it may not be safer than cover two man but um i found that like random stuff but that that's the ability that i have on and you see it works out well for me right there uh both of my safeties in the middle of the field and i'm i've debated about this uh, so so much but they both have deep zone um deep in deep middle zone so they're going to play really really good uh when they're in the middle of the field and they're in a deep zone so from cover four you see that that makes a lot of sense uh right here my man Randy Moss has deep out of lead, as you can see on him. It lights up uh, for that corner route really, really well. He gets the separation. He's able to get up over the top of that. That's really the, the whole idea of this offense is that deep out of lead is going to trigger on both sides with Randy Moss. It's going to trigger on the crossing route. You'll see here, like right here, I'm going to throw this all the way to the back corner, and you see, see him light up there. Now, I did a poor job of making sure that he was in bounds when he caught that. But you see that he's lighting up. He's activating. That's what we're looking for. So we have deep out elite on Moss. And then Davis actually also has deep out elite as well on him um, for some of the other routes that we might use. Uh, right here, uh, we're just going to, everything's going to break down. And we're going to hit Vern uh, right over the middle of the field here. Another red zone play that I actually really, really like is to simply run it just like this, run mesh just like this right here. Because you have these two underneath uh, players that you can hit. We're trying to hit Tyreek in the back of the end zone. 
but we weren't able to do that. But we, we, we have a couple of quick, easy routes um, that can really work well off of one another. Also, from inside Switch, we could do kind of a similar, uh, a similar concept. But we're going to go right back to the well here. And again, there's there's several other ways that you can run this red zone setup here. But essentially, if he's not playing hard flats on both sides of the field, the other thing I like here is that you can sometimes air truck with that. I wasn't able to do it there, but I, I, you can sometimes get outside with that with that uh, trucking animation. But it looks like he's kind of committed to running this cover two drop. Double cross crossing routes in the red zone, I find them to be super hard to stop. So like this crossing route to Vern is, is really, really hard to stop this year, um, especially if it comes from, you know, again, from all the way, you know what I mean? You kind of clear some space out, have some space to be able to throw this. He's going to obviously use over there, um, but you'll see. Now, sometimes he does what he just did right there where he stops. So in that situation, there's really nothing you can do. Now, with how the defense played on the first drive um, and how the offense has really been going up and down the field, I'm not too concerned that we take a field goal here. Obviously, it's a concern because if he goes down and scores, um, and then he gets because he gets ball at halftime, so it is a little bit of a concern. Um, one little thing I probably should have done better is I should have taken that all the way down, got to delay a game, and then kicked the field goal. But it is what it is. Defense is going to lock up. So, all that to say, if you want to get either the bunch tight end or the three three five wide ebook. Um, they're in the description. It breaks down everything that I'm doing in this video. It shows you some of the abilities and how they play uh, and all that stuff for you. So if you want to pick that, uh, either one of those ebooks up, those are in um, in the description for you. All right, right here. Looks like he's going to run stretch left. Yep, he is. And one of the things, and this is one of the secret little tips, and this is why... In, in my opinion, this is why 335 wide is so much the meta right now. It's because of what you just saw. Its ability to literally just block shed, like, it, it just block sheds like crazy. Like, I, I find that those outside linebackers, they get such good animations. Like, it is, it is so, so cool. Uh, right here, we're going to go to a little bit of a trips tight end look here. This is more of a cover six. Um, really trying to kind of just cloud everything up we have um we we don't have the right corner in the flat zone over there unfortunately but he should still play okay uh he's gonna run a little quick slants type of setup here and some throwing it away which i'm surprised i guess he just didn't want to test the user uh, but this puts him in a bad situation he should punt here um, but he looks like he's going to go for this. So defensively, we're going to make that adjustment here that we didn't have. Now, when you're in a situation like this, there's really no reason, in my opinion, to um, like to, 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 to do anything crazy. You're just trying to play your stuff. There's that, and there you saw, that's the deep inside KO. That was an inside quarter that played like a hook curl um, with the way he played that post route. So it did its job. Defense did its job. Now, offense here, this is actually a, I mean, it's not a bad idea by him because his red zone D has been really good. Um, we just need to get in for seven here. If we can get seven right here, this is really, really important. I'm going to go back to that well setup, man. I mean, this this setup has been really working for us um, so far, so we're going to go right back to it. What I might do is I might start dragging McLaurin so that I can playmaker him back across. But again, here, see how he some, see see that right there. See how he sometimes stops. If you notice on the crossing route right there, um, sometimes in the red zone, it for whatever reason it will like they will just like randomly, randomly, randomly stop. Okay, that's something you have to monitor. You 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 can't just. I think J Wall even threw a pick on that um, in the game that he played against. Um, Oh, gosh, uh, Pavin in the club championships. So here we're going to go to PA boot over. And he left the delay fade wide open. Vernon Davis going to be wide open for a touchdown. So good read by us. And, and again, not panicking, staying composed. And that's going to get us up top three possessions. Three possessions is huge. I always say that when you're playing a game of Madden, your real goal uh, where you really start to set yourself out in front of the game is when you get up by three possessions. 
and you really you're trying to it, in my opinion you're always trying to get up by about 17 points 17 point lead is very difficult to come back from in this year's game it's really difficult to come back in any year's game um but especially with how good man coverage is and how good I feel like I can make zone coverage with some of the abilities that I have. So first and 10, ball in the 25. Now if I'm in his shoes right here, he's got three timeouts. So um, really what he probably should be thinking is trying to get a field goal. If he can get a field goal here... Um, that is huge. So what we're going to do is we're going to play 25-yard flats. We're not even – I don't think we're – we're playing one Mabel coverage here as Darwin James falls down. Now, if you watch, watch that. See how they see how they let up? See how they run back on that ball? That's unique to deep in uh, – deep in zone. Uh, that deep in – or I think it's – I don't know what it's called. I think it's called deep in um, zone KO. But that that what they just did, the way they got back on the ball. Part of that's because they that um, the guy that I'm playing doesn't have uh, gunslinger on his players. Part of that is just the fact that the deep ends or the deep end KO. See how they light up even on like post routes and things like that. So if you bring them down into the box, uh, these safeties should play f relatively well. Um, they won't cover everything, but they'll cover a lot of stuff. Um, and again, mid zone KO, mid zone KO. See there, lighten up, activating should be an automatic interception. D'Angelo Hall clears it up. I don't even have to click on to him. And now that's going to put us in even better positioning here. Uh, and we have a timeout left. So, you know, you don't want to get too greedy here, but you definitely want to at least try. Um, you know, if it, it, worst case scenario, you take a sack. Uh, it is what it is. But and you got to believe that he's going to be probably blitzing everybody. Um, even though I think it would be probably smarter for him to play just max coverage, get to halftime, because he does get ball coming out of half. So it'll be interesting to see how he plays this right here. Um, but we've got Randy Moss wide open, and we're out of bounds. So now we just need um, we need about 15 yards uh, for a for a field goal. So that's like the perfect depth to use this inside switch play. This inside switch play is super effective. Um, it's also re it's really, really effective against man and zone coverages um, all alike. And here we're going to hit him right over the middle. And that's a huge field goal. Like, th this is a huge, huge, huge field goal. Hopefully I can make it. Um, I'm not the best special teams player in the world, but uh, we can do our best. So... Obviously, as you can see here, I don't think we got it perfect kick accuracy or anything. We end up hitting the crossbar. That's like, that would have been a big field goal. It would have been a big field goal. I've got to lab my, my kickoffs and stuff like that. I've lost a couple games uh, today alone because my special teams has not been on par. So uh, when you don't know how to do something, you have to practice it. You have to learn it. So anyway, defense has been playing really good. Um, I think what you're noticing is... If you, if you take one takeaway from that half, the deep in um, KO ability, you really want to bring these guys down like this. If you bring them down like this, they'll play stuff like in routes and post routes and all of that kind of – they'll play that stuff if you bring them down. If you don't bring them down, they might activate, but they just can't get down there, right? So that's why you always want to bring your zones down into the box, you know, really try to – to kind of force the issue a little bit. Now, he's run a lot of stretch this game, which I find really fascinating because of the current predicament he finds himself in. And we're not going to do anything different. We're going to just sit in this defense here. Um, and he throws another interception there, Sean Taylor. And that's because I pass committed. I never don't. I almost always pass commit. It looks like that's going to seal the game. But if you want to get the full defense that I was running in this game or the full offense, both of those are in the description. And also, if you haven't signed up for the text message membership, be sure to text me. My number is 812-216-3644. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on stream tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern time.